Mm-hmm. All right, looks like we are live. So today I just wanted to cover this uh, thing that every single one of you has been asking that I do a video on, which is what Apple did to Snazzy's iMac Pro. I left a link in the description below to his video. We're going to watch his video and give some thoughts as we go on what could have been done differently. A lot of you think that I'm making this stuff up when I talk about just how bad a lot of the service that you get at the Apple Store is. And uh, no, we're not. Uh, I, as I said in one of the Reddit threads, anybody who is skeptical, all I invite you to sit in the front of the store for just 30 minutes and listen to what people say as they walk in the store, and you will, you, you will learn some stuff. So let's just go over to Snazzy's video here. I want to play this video that Snazzy has, and, um, and then we're going to give our thoughts on it. It's a bit, about 12 minutes, so if you're looking for something that's under three minutes, uh, you know, this probably isn't it for you. But let's take a look. This is quite the story. All right, let me give you a little background. I purchased the $5,000 base model iMac Pro back in January of this year. And for the most part, it's been a great machine. Yeah, it's a bit overpriced, but it's been a good no performer shit. nonetheless. Now, ever since the 5K iMac came out back in 2012, uh, Apple has made you choose at checkout whether you want the classic iMac stand or a VESA adapter to mount onto a monitor arm, which is the choice that a lot of tall people like myself choose. But they, they made you pick when you were configuring the machine because it was not removable by the end user. Whatever you chose, stand or VESA mount, that's what you were stuck with. But much to my delight, this was changed with the iMac Pro. The stand is included on every single iMac Pro by default. And if you want the VESA adapter, Apple sells a user installable one on apple.com for $80. Sadly, this thing sucks, and it has been the source of my worst Apple repair experience ever. So back in January, I installed the mount for the first time, and it went just fine. It comes with a little credit card sized tool that allows you to reveal the nine screws that hold the iMac onto the stand. And once you remove all of those screws, the stand comes off very easily. That and mount then you can put the face amount on, which surprisingly only uses five of the nine available screw holes. But I thought, you know, whatever, Apple's great at design. I'm sure it's not an issue. <laughs> well, fast forward to March. I'm filming a video and I want to take the iMac off of the VESA kit and put it back on the stand. Now look, I'm sure it's not designed to be pulled on and off and on and off over and over and over, but it never says that you shouldn't take it off or that you can take it off. And all right, so you're all so saying I you've did. seen this before, so and let's just process, fast forward to show what they Apple did. Documentation support inside so of the first thing that they did here is they said that this mount is not Apple made by Apple. does sell an Apple branded VESA kit on your by Apple. And I was, I couldn't back it out. So I called Apple on the phone, explained the situation, and the representative told me that he couldn't provide support or warranty because the VESA adapter was not manufactured by Apple. And I was just sure that the guy was confused. This was a new computer. And I told him, no, look, the iMac Pro is different from the other iMacs. Apple does sell an Apple branded VESA kit on your website. I mean, it's $80. It comes in an Apple box with Apple Doc. Most iMac Pro buyers probably, I live near several Apple stores. So I figured it's not that big of a deal. I went to one of the stores, and it was a breeze, and everything got fixed in a Let's gym. see if I can fast forward to the Just picture of the screws. not to over tighten, which was good. Okay, we've got two out successfully. This is the, this is the money shot right here. No way. <coughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at that. That's broken That's your $80 off. mount. Look at that. Look. What do you think those screws are made of? It, it, the way it broke off, it looks like it's made out of pot metal. That's but broken. That's impossible to make. And, and look at what they did metal. to his it's actual mouth. Zinc or something. <laughs> like we had document, like we had documentation of the scratches being there, but not. So now they said there that they the needed his original stand to do the repair. It's, so why I mean, did you think fine. they needed his original stand? This. The reason I'm including Paul here is you're an automotive tech, so you're used to having to do body work. I have no idea. Why well, did they? Why this, did they want the original stand? This is a very common issue with anything with automotive: is removing broken <laughs> fasteners. You'll find, uh, if you search YouTube, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of videos on how to re remove broken fasteners professionally. And uh, one of the, the biggest hmm. reason I think they needed that mount was so that they had a guide to drill into it. Because you have to get right in the center of that broken screw and drill into it with, hopefully they're using a left-handed drill bit, a reverse drill bit. And you, you need something to guide you into it somehow, sometimes if you're not that handy with it or if you're not used to doing it. How so would you one, have fixed that? 
if this came to, let's say, an automotive, if, if a guy brought his iMac to the automotive shop instead we of We would have been able to fix it because a good automotive shop is equipped to be able to remove something like this with either easy outs or a left-handed drill bit. First, you need to center punch the very center of that broken screw and start with a tiny little drill bit and get, get a, a divot going in there and then go with a left-handed drill bit and it, it'll eventually heat it up and grip onto it and just twist it right out and you'll have the, what's left of the screw just sitting at the end of your drill bit. So he screwed it wrong. I, I, no, <laughs> no. Okay, now, no, well, dude, what? There's no screwing it wrong. Is it normal for stuff like that to come with screws that are that low quality? When would you expect to get screws that are made of that material? When? Like Ikea furniture. I would expect that out of Ikea furniture or something like that. Would you have put those screws back in there if somebody brought that to you and said, fix no. this for me? No, I would have ordered uh, some grade 8 hardware or something like that. Or like he says in his video, stainless steel screws would have been fine in the aluminum. How much would stainless steel screws actually cost? So is that going to make the mount $150 or is it? No way. No How way. much do those screws cost at Home Depot? Uh, um, I would think probably about 25 cents a piece. So probably since he said something around like nine screws, you're looking at maybe three bucks. That's retail. Re th re three bucks retail. This is the company you choose to defend. The cheapest screws I've ever seen. I've never seen screws break like that. I like how they said that it's not an Apple product in spite of the fact that it comes with an Apple logo on it. And it's sold in the Apple. Does Apple sell other products in their Apple store? I thought that was like only their stuff. Yeah. Wait, so maybe that's a counterfeit base amount. Ooh, counterfeit base amount. I know. C Apple, Apple selling their own counterfeit base amount. Maybe Apple, yeah, they're, they're counterfeiting their own stuff. Maybe customs should seize it at the border so that nobody gets these counterfeit evil Apple products with their yeah, logo that, on it. That's a third-party company putting an Apple logo on a product. He that, showed the documentation, had an Apple logo on it. That's the thing that I don't get. If you're spending that much, with the, their whole idea is you're going to spend probably twice as much as you would spend for a similarly spec PC. I would just, if it's 5000 bucks, make it $5,200 and just include a quality mount. Yeah. Because it's not like anybody is buying this because they're getting a bargain on it. They, they know that when they buy that product, they're spending top dollar. Just buy it, get it with a mount. I mean, just include the mount and charge extra. It's like Jessa went to this hotel and it was something like $2,000 a night, but you had to pay at the Coke machine and there was some sort of digital rights management on the cup so it would know if you paid again. Like they're paying oh, 2000 no. for the vacation. Just charge them 2100 a night and say unlimited Coca-Cola. It's, it's just, it's, it's like nickel and diming at that extent is just sad. Really sad. And that's See, what paying eighty dollars for for what essentially is just two pieces of uh, bent aluminum and drilled machined aluminum. Well, why couldn't you get some decent screws? Yeah, that that that's really sad. That's pathetic. This this goes beyond just not wanting to replace a screen because Linus messed something up. That is just this is a machine that I don't think anybody should buy. Like at the very least, just buy a MacBook and just you know put or buy um, buy a Mac Pro. And then buy a screen that you vase amount to the wall that comes with a proper vase amount. But, and uh, they, he talks about in his video that uh, nobody in his, his uh, Apple store was certified to work on this new machine. Well, you, like, I, I, I think the engine automotive certification, the ASC certification, qualifies you better to be drilling and tapping a hole than anything that Apple would ever have. Would you trust somebody at the Genius Bar with a drill or any sort of power tool? I, not really. <laughs> All right. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.